Okay, welcome back. Last time we went to Lancashire and dueled Pegasus and learned that he didn't actually have a Rose card on him. And then we went to the Isle of Man and dueled a Shizu and won our seventh White Rose card. And today is the day we promised to meet Henry. So now, oh, history is about to happen. As in August of 1485, Yugi, Henry Tudor, lands at Milford Haven. So we now oh, hurry and all roads converge upon Bosworth Field, which is here in the middle, basically. And now we get to duel Richard Sly Sheen of York. However, I'm going to quickly uh, shuffle the deck around just a little bit, because I had to weaken my deck from a previous duel. So uh, let's uh, change a few things around. And by that, I mean, sorry, Ikaboon, you are out of here. But these three, well, these two are gone, and oh, Call the Haunted, Call the Haunted gets an honorable discharge. And I have never seen that card art for Gemini Elf before. That's, I've never seen that art before. Interesting. Okay, so, now what did I take out of the deck? Oh, that's what it was. A, uh, it, what, it was an A, uh, it was Neck Hunter. It was a reaper of the cards, and honestly, I think it was—I think it probably was Dark Titan of Terror. But just for my own convenience, I'll just put in a second King of Yami Makai, because honestly, King of Yami Makai does good work. So with that, our deck cost of nine hundred words with a deck cost of nine hundred and ninety-four, we can now head on over and duel Richard Sly Sheen of York who is represented here by Haitian or Heishin, and is meant to be Richard III of England, basically. I see you've got rose cards. Then you must be one of Lord Crawford's rose crusaders. Your timing couldn't be better. When I heard Yugi had landed, I rushed my troops to the front. However, I arrived much too early. It'll be some time before Lord Crawford and his men arrive. In the meantime, why don't we play a duel or two? I learned a trick or two from Seto that I'd like to try out. It's not every day that you get... It's not every day that you have the opportunity to play the great King Richard III of England. How about that? So now we are basically playing ca uh, card games with the king in terms of practicality. However, uh, you can tell he isn't all that important because he doesn't even get his own unique theme. Honestly, that's one of my big issues with this game. I wish you had more dual themes. Also, he has... The Battle Arcs, Battle Arcs, Battle Steer, Sengenjin, Solitude, and the one who hunts souls. I get that he has a Beast Warrior deck, so, he has a, so he's a bit limited with what he can work with, but man, they could have done so much better for that. And also, this is now my house. This is now my domain, because I now have the Darkness Field in the middle of the map. Everything... Like, all- everything now converges back in the darkness of my IDAC. Everything now works in my favor here. So, uh, yeah. This could be a very short duel. So, you know what? Let's just power up Dark Chimera and get to work. I'm not gonna sit around and wait for Ushioni or anything. I'm just gonna kind of rush him, I think. Because we have other duels to do today. And I don't want this one to go super long. Like, I don't want this... Sorry, I don't want this episode to go super long. But at the same time, I do want to actually, you know, be able to win stuff from... I also do want to be able to actually win things from graveyard slots, so maybe I should. However, his monsters won't get a boost from here. You know what, let's just attack him. Let's just attack... Okay, he has Acid Trap Hole. Good to know, good to know. I mean, I do kind of feel bad, because I... I feel kind of bad, because I said when I... When I... I said when I first got it that I really liked Dark Chimera, and I wanted to be able to use it more. And then it's just like... I haven't actually been able to use it a whole lot. I feel like I should be a bit more willing to actually just kind of throw power-ups on it and just have that go. Also, I should note... Um... Watch him call him. His battle steer is actually the highest rank possible, which is Secretary of Defense, I think. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the highest rank you can get in this game. Now, I'm just going to put Phantom Dewan down here, 
and see what he does. Regardless of what he does, it actually doesn't make any difference because he gets a direct attack this turn. And he does get a fusion, but I don't know what to. I'll be able to take an educated gas, I suppose. I'm going to take an educated gas and say that is either a rabid horseman or outside chance. Maybe I've forgotten what it's called. Uh, it could be a judge man. Is it a judge man? Oh, over tension. Is it? A, is it a judge man? No, that was just a battle ox. <laughs> because that was the fusion there. Ten out of ten. I I learned how to use my eyes today. Okay, so let's uh. Let's just destroy that. And now... Honestly, I'll just move forward and attack. Because realistically, he can't do anything to stop me now. Like, he is entirely on the back foot. I... Like, he is entirely on the back foot. He can't push through my monsters. He's entirely on the back foot. He can't, pu he can't push his way through my monsters. My monsters are just generally more powerful than his are anyway. And realistically... There's nothing he can do to stop me here. So, uh, yeah, this one is looking like it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty much a certain win here. I don't see a situation where I suddenly just completely 180 and throw the duel away. But at the same time, but at the same time, I know me, so it could happen. It likely won't. Also, what did he fuse? Okay, that is indeed a judge man. Town town, actually, I actually got there. But now we just uh, walk, we just wander on up, attack him with a, uh, drop him down to a thousand points, move forward, uh, summon. You know what? He, it was some. We were summoned here and chose Creole as our deck leader uh, to fight uh, the Yorkists. Might as well slave. If we're gonna, if we're gonna bring down the king, we might as well do it with what we started with. So Creole manages to finish off Richard the Third, and we get our win. Ten out of ten. We are going to get nothing from these graveyard slots. Uh, yeah, that's just garbage here. So I'm just going to hit all three buttons at the same time and see what we get. I mean, I got battle ox. Battle ox could maybe come in handy. But with that, we are now two duels away from the finish of this side of the game. But we also have a fair bit of talking to do. Drat, I lost. Okay. Oh well, what do you expect from a beginner, eh? Don't let it bother you. But the important thing is how I perform on the battlefield. And with the support of Lord Crawford and the Rose Crusaders, victory will be ours for the taking. I'm afraid it won't be e that easy, sire. Who? What? So, uh, he has Pegasus to do Pegasus things. Lord Crawford, it's about time, and what exactly are you talking about, may I ask? I fear that, aside from Sato, all the Rose Crusaders have fallen into the hands of the Rose Duelist. They were beaten by the very person you just had the pleasure of dueling, sire. I present you the Rose Duelist. What? And may I add that I've I decided to join Yugi and the Lancastrians in their bid for the power. What? <laughs> Uh, my match with the Rose Duelist taught me the, a true meaning of power. The Duelist may be an even more sorry. The Duelist may be even more powerful than Seto and the Rose Crusaders. That would mean that Yuki is likely to succeed in landing his troops. With the greatest duel master backing the Lancastrians, the Orcists are bound to be defeated. I would be a fool not to back the winning horse. And what of your hostage son, Lord Crawford? You wouldn't dare. Uh, you wouldn't dare touch a hair on his head if you, on your, if you and your troops are defeated. Oh my, I believe Yugi and his army has arrived. It's showtime, sire. And so, Richard III continues to take some L's. August 22nd. Uh, sorry, August 22nd, 1485. The final battle of the Wars of the Roses commences on Bosworth Field. Sometime later. A horse. A horse. My kingdom for a horse. Richard III falls in battle. So, uh, so I'm just gonna pause on this for a second. Do we, like, do we know about, like, we know that Richard III died in battle, but, like, do we know, like, who specifically got him? 
Also, I think they have, I think a few years ago they like found it, what the words. Also, I just dropped a thing. I think they like found his remains or something like in what is now a car park, park or something. And also, I, I do love this little shot. That looks really cool. Lo here, this long usurped royalty from the temples of this re etch have I plucked off to grace thy brows withal. Withal, wear it, enjoy it, and make much of it. The victory brought about by Yuki's troops signaled the end of over 330 years of rule under the Plantagenet. My thanks to you. Without your help, this victory would not be ours. Earning the respect of Lord Crawford and enlisting his aid ensured the fall of Richard III. I cannot thank you enough. I owe you my thanks as well, for I would have hated to be on the losing side. N uh, now I've all that's left is the... Sorry. Now all that's left of the enemy is, the is that despicable Seto. Lord Crawford, do you know where he might be? Knowing so, me best guess would be Stonehenge. I see. I hate to admit it, but I doubt we have the power to take out a duelist of his level. I must ask you a fa- of the I must ask a favour of you once again. Face the evil one and end his threat once and for all. So now, it is time for us to go all the way back to where we began. All the way over to Stonehenge. Where we can now go and duel one Seto Kaiba himself. The big man. The legend. Uh, I don't know why I came into this. I'm not going to change the deck at all. Realistically, I probably should have put Kaiser Dragon in over Blackland Fire Dragon and made a couple of little changes here and there. But honestly, that's fine. So let's just head on over to Stonehenge and duel Seto. You're here much sooner than I expected. I knew that Crawford would turn on us one day, but I didn't expect the tide of battle to turn so soon. Actually, Crawford's betrayal and the fall of the Yorkists matter not to me. All, uh, all I hoped for or from this tiresome struggle was to find an opponent worthy of my attention. When I knew you'd been summoned, I chose to wait. Each time a member of my mo uh, each time a member of my Rose Crusaders fell before you, I shivered in anticipation. Once you beat the last member, I knew you were ready to face me. Long have I starved to be to best a duelist equal in power to me, hungered to best such an opponent in battle. You ha you wish to have my rose card? Then take it from me. Face me in battle, duelist. So, now we have to duel Kaiba, and to the surprise of absolutely no one, yeah, his, his deck leader is the Blue Eyes White Dragon. And also, he is one of two, he is one of like three or four people in the entire game who actually gets their own unique duel music, which I'm a big fan of. So, uh, you know, that's good. Now, his stained glass windows obviously have the blue eyes white dragon. Uh, the Komori dragon, uh, I think that, the kind of like dragon knight looking one is called like Mikazuki no Yaiba or something. Then there is the serpent knight dragon, and then finally the Kaiser dragon. So, uh, let's go and try to get through this without too much hassle. Because, to be totally honest, Kaiba is going to be a bit... Kaiba is going to be a bit of a pain. And by that, I mean, he does have the Blue Eyes White Dragon, both as his deck leader and as a regular card. And I'm pretty confident, I am pretty certain, that he will have access to the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon which I don't really want to have to worry about if I can avoid it. So, uh, let's power up first. So, Toon Summon Skull goes up to 3,000. If nothing else, that can now already go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the blue eyes. However, I do want to get my own power a bit more. You know, I don't want to go even with it. I want to be able to destroy it. I do also need to be careful because I don't want to accidentally hit it with the Paralyzing Potion. So, uh, let's just wait it out, I guess. I'll just wait it out here, and I think I should be in a pretty solid position here. So, I can pretty much just kind of turtle him out here. Also, these corners are super good, because because looking from where he is, he can actually summon over the labyrinth onto that normal space for now. Which uh, would be kind of bad for me to have to worry about, but honestly, I'm not too worried about it. Because I have a super powerful monster here, and a paralyzing potion there. Now my biggest worry would be, uh, honestly, my big worry right now would be if he actually summons something and actually crashes it into my Toon Summon Skull. Because, honestly, that's my most powerful card right now. 
And I know he won't, or at least he more than likely won't, but I don't like the fact that he can. And that's what worries me, perhaps, more than anything else. And, okay, another Fiend's Hand. Honestly, I will move Paralyzing Potion forward and put Fiend's Hand there. Because now, and I guess I'll just move and kind of block off this side. Wait. Okay, for a second. For a second, I thought I had Metal Guardian in hand. I don't know why I did. But now, now the ball is entirely in his court. Lord of Dragons. He's crashing that. That was a blue eyes. I'm not too happy about losing my Toon Summon Skull, but at the same time, it crashed and destroyed Blue Eyes White Dragon. However, that Lord of Dragons could be scary, so, uh, what's its effect? What does its effect do? Uh, dragons are immune to opponent's spell cards. That's fine, I don't have any other spell cards going on. No, wait, I, have, I have Paralyzing Potion. Uh... Well, that, that's a misplay on my part, but I can just uh, I can just take one step forward, summon over the wall, and strike it down next turn. So I'm a bit less worried about it, especially because he put it down. Especially because he put it down onto Meadow, which actually makes the spell cast as weaker. So I I'm just gonna summon up a King of Yami Makai and blast the Lord of the Dragons. Never mind, that's a negate attack. So my attack is gonna be well negated. And Giant Soldier of Stone can just go into defense mode. To be totally honest, I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that he isn't, like, doing anything currently. It's like, why is he not summoning something? Why is he not attacking me? Why, like, I'm genuinely concerned that, like, I'm more concerned about the fact that he hasn't been just uh, demonstrating any form of, like, threat towards me. Like, the fact that he isn't acting in a threatening manner is kind of the scariest part of all currently. Okay, let's get rid of these. I don't really need them, but I'll take a second Fiend's Hand on the field, just in case. And I'll flip the face up, because I can. Okay, yeah. I think I'm just gonna start playing a bit more aggressively here, because this could take a little while. And, in all honesty, I don't really see myself losing here. Also, I think he may have heard me He's suggesting doing that, and that's going to be a big hit of 2,400 points of damage to me. However, that second Blue Eyes White Dragon is just getting pulled down into the grave with it now. So now, two Blue Eyes White Dragons are gone. So logically, he should only be able to have a maximum of one more. However, you know, it is still a Blue Eyes White Dragon, and it's still Seto Kaiba, so I'm sure he'll probably have something planned. And by that, I mean, he may or may not have Monster Reborn. Wait, he may or may not have Monster Reborn. I think that's probably what he has. He probably has Monster Reborn. Okay, so let's summon up Dark Chimera here. Mostly just to fill in a space, and also because now he can't summon over the wall. Because if he summoned over the wall, I would be in a really bad spot. Although I probably shouldn't approach any further with Reaper of the Cards. I mean, I say I shouldn't, but at the same time... At the same time, I probably should. Okay, I'll move Paralyzing Potion to there. I'll move Reaper of the Cards to there. And now... I'll move Barox forward and I'll put Shadow Spell down here, because this way, this way, if he does attack my Reaper, if he attacks my Reaper of the Cards with anything, he has to move, and if he attacks my Reaper of the Cards, Shadow Spell should activate. Right? 10 out of 10, that was a Sword Stalker, which was up to 3,000 attack points, which now drops back down to 2,000, as an and a Spellbound for a while. I mean, it, it can still hit through the Reaper eventually, but it buys me a little bit more time. And in this game, time can be all you need. Sometimes time is everything. Uh, so now I'll do that. I'll summon Mammoth Grave... No, wait, I won't summon Mammoth Graveyard. I'll move Fiend's Hand forward and I'll fuse Mammoth Graveyard on top of it. And now I can move with that forward. And by forward, I mean around. Because Paralyzing Potion is 
kind of just going to box him in now. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised he didn't... Does he know what that is? I think he might know that that's not... I'm suspicious of that. I think he might actually know that that isn't a monster. You know what? Let's just throw all these out and power. No. Let's not do that. Uh... I kind of want to get rid of something, but I don't know what. I think my best bet is probably just waiting it out for now. Yeah, I think I'm just going to have to wait it out for now. Just one more turn. Uh, actually, no, I'll just get rid of the Great Mammoth. I'll get rid of the Great Mammoth of Goldfine, and then my Ushioni will probably just push forward through the Reaper of the Cards anyway. And... Ushioni will now be powered up to 3150. And, uh, and because of that 3150, that means it'll be able to hit over a Blue Eyes White Dragon if he has a third one there. And now, he has to do something. He, he can't just sit here. He has to make a move. Okay, so let's land an attack. So that, first things first, is 1150. And now... That is pretty good, because I'm in the clear. And I now have Castle of Dark Illusions in hand. And with Castle of Dark Illusions in hand, that means all of my monsters are about to get even more powerful. And Kaiba is now super on the... He's now super on the run. If he, if he steps right... Yeah. I was going to say, if he steps left, he loses. If he steps right, he loses. Okay, so Ushioni can tear a Kaiser Dragon apart. So that's good. That's good for me. And we don't get Spellbound because we're you are actually on the negative Guardian Star. We've been losing there. And now... I can put... I can move King of Yami Makai in front of me just for a little bit of safety. And I can wait it out one more turn, I think. I'll wait it out for one more turn and see what he does. Because he has to move. It's over. It's... Yeah, this is over. It's done. Because now, Ushioni can do whatever. Paralyzing Potion, he still doesn't know that it's not a monster. And I can summon up my Castle of Dark Illusions and power up all of my other monsters. And now, he can either take the hit from my... He can either take the second hit from my King of Yami Makai, or... He can take the hit from Ushioni and lose. Either way, it's over. Like, it's officially... It is so over for him right now. However, just because I can, just because I think it would be more fun, I'm gonna go for the more... Uh, rather than taking his life points away, I'm going to go for the time-tested attempt to make him surrender. Because I think nothing would hurt Seto Kaiba's pride more than being forced to surrender. And with that, he's forced to surrender. So with that, we win. Also, unfortunately, despite the fact that we destroyed two of them, I don't think uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon appears in the graveyard slot. When we beat Yugi, the Dark Magician won't turn up in them either. So that kind of sucks, but we win a Kaiser Dragon, we win a Dragon Treasure, and we win a Sword Stalker, so you know what? I can't really complain about that, because those are some really nice cards to pick up. And now we have uh, just a bit of dialogue before the final, final duel, so we are pretty much at the end of this side of the game. Well done, Duelist. I may have lost, but my heart sings with the joy of having faced you in battle. Is what he would be saying if this wasn't all part of his plan. Because, just think about where we are. Twas duel to be remembered. I take great pride in the fact that I fall by your hand. And if you believe that, I'll sell you some swamp land in the outer reaches of the realm. A duel to be remembered, indeed. At least that part of it is true. For thanks to you, I've completed the ritual for the great summoning of the roses. Listen and learn the truth as to why I've let you survive to this day. The Rose Duelist is an integral part of the Great Summoning, for only by unleashing the absolute power from a duel can the Great Summoning succeed. 
There's only one reason why I came to England and sided with the Yorkists. I needed you. I knew that once the Lancastrians were cornered, they would turn to the High Druid and summon the only one who could wield the, pa wield the power that is equal to mine. The ritual for the Great Summoning is nothing less than a high-powered duel with the Rose Duelist. And, uh, and the key to the ritual is having all the Rose cards here at this hallowed site. In short, your victory is but a hollow one. The time has come to a save at which has eluded my clan for centuries. With the coming of the Card Guardian, I'll seal a pact that will ensure my rule as well as, well as those who will descend from me throughout the future. I mean, buddy, like... At this point, I'm from, like, 515 years in the future. And, yeah, that's not gonna work. Like, history ain't gonna... History says otherwise, buddy, unfortunately. So, uh, here he is. I'm not gonna attempt to read his name. I know it's, like, I know it's in Welsh. Yes, he's here. The Guardian, Guardian this... Sorry, the Guardian walks this world once again. Welcome, O oh Great One. To celebrate your arrival, I offer you a sacrifice. I offer you the Rose Duelist. Hmm, it seems that there's been a misunderstanding here. Well, it matters not. The Rose Duelist is definitely a fine offering that only a fool would choose to pass up. I do like how, unlike when Haitian did it in Forbidden Memories, he's just like, I mean, I mean, that's not how it works, but I guess. <laughs> like, he seems a lot more okay with it. Okay, so, now, what do I want to do? Because I should be able to get a reincarnation going here. So, the question is, what do I want to reincarnate? So, I have two of those. You know what? I will... Oh. I will reincarnate... Uh... I'm probably never going to use Giant Mech Soldier, so let's use that. And in its place, we get... Uh, Mikazuki no Yaiba. That's a pretty solid card. Cybersaurus. That's okay. And finally, we get Labyrinth Wall. Okay. Labyrinth Wall is never getting used. Mikazuki no Yaiba is pretty nice to have. Honestly, I'll probably keep a hold of these because I know I'll probably need some dragons at some point. Okay, need is a big word, but you know what? I'll br I'll get some use out of them at some point. So now we can enter the final duel of this side of the game. And as you can see from his deck cast, it is kind of wild. Let us see what you're made of, shall we? Prepare yourself for battle. So, uh, I think it's, I don't know how it's pronounced. Like, Manawatan, like, Manawatan Fablia? I don't know how to read it. I know it's, it, I know it's Welsh. I know it's like part of a Welsh legend, but I don't know how to actually pronounce it. I can't read Welsh. I'm really sorry. Okay, so his deck leader is the Skull Knight, which isn't great for me, but hey. And just like Pegasus and Ashizu, he also just has the kind of default spellcaster set. So uh, let's just go for it and see what we can do. Oh, that is perfect. Because straight away, immediately turn one, I can just get rid of the entire crush field and turn it to the darkness. This could, you know, this could work against me because, you know, he does have a spellcaster as his deck leader. He could, he could summon a, a pretty strong fiend or spellcaster of his own. But you know what? That's okay. I have, uh, I have plenty of strong options available for me. Also, he's, I think, I think this man is stupid. You know what, I'm just, I'm just gonna take one step forward real quick. Wait. Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. So, he has weakened specific enemy type. I assume he just weakens fiends by my monsters being near him. However, one way or another, he's just taking 3,000 points of damage for free on turn two. Like, yeah, he's... I... What? What did he just play? I've never... I've played this game a lot in my years, but like... What was that? I've never seen that smoke effect. Oh, it was Crush Card. Strengthens all monsters with a thousand attack points or less. Uh, monsters just... Okay. Okay, that's fine. Do I draw any of my power-ups? You know what? 
just because we can. Just because we can, uh, we'll make ourselves even more powerful and just hit them again. So that was um, <laughs> an extremely anticlimactic final duel, because we just annihilated him. We just destroyed him in three turns. We just went, okay, Yami, Toon Summon Skull, with a power up, Castle of Dark Illusions, done. And there's going to be nothing in here, it's just Mega Morph. So, you know what, I even won one of the Mega Morphs. I even got Mega Morph out of it. That's a massive win as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so with that, we have now finished this half of the game after this last bit of narration. What madness is this? I can't lose. I'm the guardian of the cards. I mean, look, you can guard the cards as much as you want. If you don't know how to play the game, you're not very good at it. Me, the Guardian, defeated. No, to have come so far, it can't be. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not reading the entire thing. Also, imagine being Kaiba in that situation. You've, you've done everything you can. You've had this massive, fancy, elaborate plan. And then it's just like... Bro loses in three turns. So, I leave this message for those who follow in my path. The guardian who falleth at the hands of man was naught but a mere mortal. Journey forth and seek the true guardian, for he shall be the one to guide thee to glory. Seto, the high mage of Amenfotep. Because, obviously, this Seto is the descendant of the one from Forbidden Memories. Two months later, Yugi, or King Henry VII, was officially crowned king at Westminster Cathedral on October 30th. Seto and his Rose Crusaders were never captured. However, they were never to be seen again. Henry VII was credited for ending the threat of the Rose Crusaders and was dubbed Yu-Gi-Oh! by his supporters. Naught has been recorded of the Rose Duelist's contrib con contribution to the downfall of the Rose Crusaders, or whether the Rose Duelist managed to return to the proper day and age. Uh, the tale remains of, in the lost chapter in the annals of history. However, a document written by the hand of Seto have uh, yeah, a document written by Seto, written by the hand of Seto has survived over the years. This document passed through several hands, including John D. the Alchemist, Emperor Rudolf II of Bohemia, and scholar uh, Athanasius Kircher. Auctioned off in 1912, the document found its way in the hands of Wilfred Voynich. Uh, an, anti an, uh, an American collector of antique books. Known as the Voynich Manuscript, it remains undeciphered to this day, save for a short and mysterious inscription. NVE7A3EZ. This is a code for a card. I'll show that when I start up the next side of the game. So this is the Red Rose chapter at an end. So yes, we will save the game. And the credits will roll here, but I'll just skip them. I'll just skip the credits here. Can I skip the credits? Okay, I don't think I can skip the credits here. But yeah, so we've now finished the we've now finished the red rose side of the game. I will be coming back and doing the the white rose side starting in the next episode. So I'm gonna end off today's episode here. Yeah, and I will also give my I'll just let the full credits play out and give my final summary when I finish the game fully. So I'm gonna end off today's episode here. As always, feel free to leave a comment or click any of the buttons down below if you feel so inclined, and I will hopefully see you all next time where we start of the White Rose side of the game. So, uh, yeah, gonna end off today's episode here. Okay, thanks for watching. Later!